So let's talk about periods today, okay? So in the sense like what is called regular periods, generally a period cycle length between 21 and 35 days is called regular periods. If you have lesser than 31 days, if you have more than 35 days, probably some hormonal imbalance or other factors disturbing your menstrual cycles where you have to take a period. Second thing, is it necessary that you have to get the periods on a specified date? No, it can be plus or minus 2-3 days. So even if your cycle is between 21 to 35 days, you can have 2-3 to three days before and 2-3 to three days later. Third thing, what is a normal amount of menstrual flow? So the normal amount of menstrual flow varies from person to person. And generally, people sometimes describe that heavy bleeding, narayya pads, nanajita, so culture, abding. Randomly, a person should not give a statement. Usually, what is called excessive bleeding or otherwise called menorrhagia is if the bleeding is lasting more than seven days, or if you are changing your pads every few hours once in a day, or else because of your bleeding you are having anemia symptoms, then it is called as excessive bleeding. So if the excessive bleeding is there, ultimately it will give rise to anemia, but not in a single cycle. Sometimes it might take two, three cycles. So if it is so, then it is called as excessive flow where you have to take a consult and find out what is the, or what is the reason for this excessive blood flow patterns. And third th and uh, the last thing is like, how many days of flow you should have? Is it mandatory that you should bleed for this many number of days? No, the flow can vary between two to seven days. So person can have sometimes two days or sometimes three days or three to five days. It's not necessary that your flow has to last for seven days. So this is about it. So what are all the things like that you are not allowed to do during periods? There is no such thing like that. You can continue all your activities, whatever you are doing. If you're breastfeeding, you continue breastfeeding. If you're an exercise person or a sport person, yeah, you can continue doing that. If you're dieting, if you're a worker, yeah, continue doing so. Does period pull your energy down? Yeah, definitely during periods or even the phase before periods, you know that your periods are coming. You will develop a lot of premenstrual symptoms. Sometimes people can have headache. Sometimes people will lose their temper and shout at things. And people can have abdominal cramps. And sometimes you can feel your breasts being heavy. All these are normal symptoms. These are all very normal symptoms. There is no requirement that you have to take a medications or you have to treat these symptoms. These are like part and parcel of women's life. So there is no requirement for these symptoms to get treated. So coming to the thing, what else like other alarming symptoms is sometimes pain. The pain can be very excruciating in the sense like a patient has to depend on two, three painkillers or high painkiller dosages or sometimes requiring the necessity for an injections. So that phase you have to consult where we have discussed in the prior post that because of this excessive pain, the reason can be endometriosis, adenomyosis or sometimes even normal. So in such cases, you have to consult. Otherwise, sometimes mild discomfort, mild lower abdomen pain, sometimes which puts, which makes you to take rest for two, three hours is absolutely normal. So if you're feeling little low during your menstrual cycles, you can accept it and move forward. It's not necessary that you have to stay super energetic. That means only you are healthy. It's not like that. Periods can have different, different symptoms on every woman. So every person can analyze their own symptoms and decide how they are healthy. So... Next thing is like, uh, like can, what kind of menstrual products do you use? Yeah, absolutely nowadays we say no to cloths because all of us know very clearly because of cloths, the hygiene part and rewashing and all those things like uh, it's, it's almost like not an ideal thing to be used on but you can use tampons, you can use pads, you can use like uh, cloth pads nowadays which is coming up with like disposable and then you can use menstrual cups which have changed many people's life that they stay extremely happy when the usage of menstrual cups. So, and then one another thing is like sometimes when the bleeding is excess and uh, sometimes people use like wrong pad usage in the sense like sometimes people develop rashes with certain kinds of pad where they can have irritations in the, I mean in the labia that is like external portion of the skin in the local area. In such cases, please do analyze and change your pads to like a soft or else like cloth pads or sometimes menstrual cup, yeah, it can really help in such cases and sometimes occasionally what happens is you do leak at times so make sure that about your flow pattern and you have to change your pads frequently and last but not the least all of us have to learn about learn about the disposal of the pads 
so the pads has been disposed in a very hygienic manner and i think now most of the places do have like a pad dispenser so where you have to like take the pads and like cover it carefully without the spillage of the blood and disposes it in the pad dispenser if the pad dispenser is not available at least please dispose it in a proper dustbin with a proper coverage so that it does not it does not give rise to a bad odor or it does not introduce the infections by the spillage of the blood which contains bacteria so that's all about the periods if any queries or anything please do post we are ready to answer your questions Take care. Bye.